I spent uh, my first year in the flax mill as a rouseabout, taking on any job that was to be done. I then graduated to becoming swamp manager at a fairly early age and it had a, some 160 men under my charge. Uh, this task, the task of the swamp manager was to maintain the land in good order by keeping the drains cleaned and uh, disposing of weeds, uh, organising the tramming and the flax cutting and delivering the flax into the mill as the raw material to be thereafter processed. There is not much to be seen around here. It's all swamps and sand, hillocks pretty frequent, and also clumps of bush. A large windmill entices travellers on State Highway 1 to visit the town of Foxton. Behind the windmill is a flax processing museum. In the 1890s, Foxton was part of the major flax milling region in the country. New Zealand flax is one of the country's most distinctive native plants. It has sword-shaped leaves up to three metres long that grow in a fan shape on lowland swamps. When Māori arrived in New Zealand, they soon discovered the useful properties of flax. Its berries provided sweet nectar, the roots could cure infections, the gum healed burns and the leaves could be used as bandages. Māori women weaved flax baskets, containers and mats. By scraping the green flesh away with a sharp shell, they could make flax fibre or mocha. Twisted, plaited and woven, mocha could be made into fine fishing nets, footwear, cords and ropes. Flax became so crucial for Māori that when English missionary William Colenso told chiefs that it did not grow in England, they replied, how is it possible to live there without it? European explorers visiting New Zealand bartered goods with Māori in exchange for flax ropes for their ships. Australian merchants could make a good profit on selling New Zealand flax fibre to England. By the 1820s, a healthy flax trade began, peaking in the early 1830s. Māori were usually paid in goods such as muskets. The Manawatu region contained an abundance of flax plants. This helped the local Ngāti Tōa tribe obtain many muskets, which enabled them to conquer large areas of central New Zealand. Flax became a major industry, especially around Foxton. By the 1860s, flax production became mechanised. A machine could produce about 250 times as much flax fibre in a day as someone stripping it by hand. In the 1890s, large flax mills were built in the Foxton area, but it was difficult and unpleasant work. The rain has made a great mess about here. It is very muddy about the place. First the flax leaves were cut, tied in bundles and taken to the mill. Then they were fed through the stripping machine. A worker sat underneath the shrieking machine in the so-called glory hole to catch the slimy fibre and bunch it. Percy has now been in the wash a week and I do not like him. He is slow, clumsy and slovenly, seems quite lost sometimes and it is a nuisance when the stuff is coming fast. The fibre was then washed and hung out to dry. About ten days later, the dry fibre was put through a scutching machine, which made it finer and softer. Finally, the fibre was packed into bales and exported. However, during the early 20th century, the draining of swamps for farmland allowed harmful pests to flourish and attack the flax. This led to a rapid decline in the industry. Our Christmas will be a gloomy one. I fear we have scarcely anything to eat except bread and meat. However, government support during the 1930s and a decision to concentrate on the local market saw the industry improve. Flax mills in the Manawatu region supplied a large Foxton factory which made flax fibre into wool packs for farmers, as well as underfelt, floor coverings and binder twine. But the removal of government subsidies in the 1970s and competition from synthetic fibres saw the industry fold. The last flax processing plant in Foxton closed in 1973.